Hey guys, welcome back to Genius Learning. Today I want to show you guys the Lagrangian of a system that was a little bit difficult for me to understand the constraints. And so I'm gonna show you by detail how to construct this Lagrangian and find the kinetic and potential. And also the most important is the constraint which gave me a hard time for a long time. All right, so starting off here, we have a bowl. And inside that bowl, we have a pendulum. And at the end of the pendulum is a sphere. So this is a 3D sphere here. Okay, so it's just rolling in the bowl with the pendulum. All right, the potential energy up here above the zero is, is zero. Okay, now let's label these, these radiuses and all these lengths here. All right, so in order for us to understand the constraint, we need to understand how to label this graph. So if the pendulum is extended all the way or it sits in the middle, then the radius all the way to the edge is big R, okay? That means that there's a little r radius that exists from the inside of the sphere to the outside of the sphere. And the space from that little r back to the origin is big R minus that little piece, okay? So it's that blue part. So once we can understand that, let's go ahead and label this side over here. So with this data here, we know that this side is big R minus little r, right? Big R minus little r is from the center of the sphere to the origin. And we're gonna make a dotted line for our opposite. So this is gonna be opposite over hypotenuse. So we have big R minus little r sine of theta this side right here and for this side up here right I'm gonna write r minus little r cosine theta that's from here all the way to right there okay so now what is the remaining piece for this vertical right here so all of this so we know that the entire length is r, right? And if we just wanna describe this piece, then we're gonna do the entire length minus this, leaving us with just the piece that we're interested in. Okay, so we're gonna do the entire r minus, so the entire r minus this whole chunk will leave us with this. So this whole chunk here is big R minus little r cosine theta. All right, perfect. So with that, now we can express it in position coordinates and then we can get velocities and, and everything else. Okay, so we have the position coordinates. So let's write those down. So we're gonna have here position is equal to x in the x direction, right? So this length here all the way to the center of the sphere is big R minus little r sine theta. In the y direction, we have this entire length, or better yet, we have this right here, which is where the center of this sphere is. Okay, so we have R minus big R minus little r cosine theta. Okay. 
right? So now let's do the velocities. X dot, we're gonna take the derivative of this with respect to time. And the only thing changing in here is theta. So R and big R remain fixed. Theta is a function of time. So the derivative of sine is just cosine. So R minus little r, cosine theta, theta dot. So remember the chain rule because we're taking the derivative with respect to time. Okay, and then similarly, we have here r minus r minus little r of cosine. The only thing that's changing with respect to time is the theta. So we're gonna remove this negative because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So we got r minus little r sine theta, theta dot. Okay, so, so I think, uh, okay, so this, this r right here doesn't need to be here to express the, the y length. I'm sorry about that. This was mistaken, but it's no big deal. So we got the x direction here that expresses the sphere up to the center. And then coming down in the y, we have r minus little r cosine. So r minus little r cosine is our y. All right, sorry about that, guys. But either way, it got taken away in the derivative, so it would have ended up correct, but uh, just to do it, you know, thorough and proper. Now, we have our position velocity. All right, before we move on to our kinetic and potential, let's understand the constraint, which is where I struggled a lot in this problem. And so let's see if I can clear it up a little bit better. We have here the angle expressed from the original uh, movement of the entire uh, pendulum, and we have an angle phi, okay? So the combination of them, right, expresses the entire half of this sphere. So you guys see that? So it's half of a sphere. So here is theta on the outside, okay? So all we're interested in right now is in this half sphere that's represented by theta and phi, okay? And let's say that we took this and we rolled it upward like that. So now it's gonna start like this. You guys see that? So we're just gonna take this and reset it to where it started from. So we're gonna roll it up and it's gonna end up horizontal with half sticking down and the other half of the sphere is, is up here, but we're not interested in that part. So we're gonna take it and put it up here. Now from here, right, we're gonna start rolling down. And so if we start rolling down, Right, we're gonna have, it's gonna look like this sometime around here. Right, remember, it's just gonna be rolling down. We're gonna be like this sometime here. Okay, we're gonna be like this. So we're rolling like that. And then right where this is at, we are looking like that. Okay, so it's just following this trajectory. And it's going to keep on rolling. Okay, so it's falling, it's falling, it's falling. It's coming this way. And almost approaching the bottom, right? You're going to roll and roll and roll. And all the way at the bottom, we're going to be opposite to how we started. Okay, so... Let's make sure you see that. 
So we start off like this, right? We're gonna bring this to the top and we start off like this and we start rolling down where this side comes down here like that, boom. This side comes down, this side comes down, this side comes down, so it's just gonna keep rolling and that is expressing this ball here, right? And if you could see these two look alike, that's how it looks for the whole ball to roll. We're just doing a half so we can get a better visual. This goes that way, this goes that way, all right? All the way until this half here is now the opposite, okay? So what that means is that when this half or the sphere, right, rolled through this entire arc length, this entire arc length that it rolled through, it moved through only half of its sphere, right? Because if it continued, then it would do a 360 and it would be back to its original direction, right? But all we did was flip it over. So that's 180, it did a 180. And so in the time that it took for the sphere to get all the way here, we went through the outside of the sphere 180 degrees, okay? So those two things are equal. Let me highlight this piece. This is the part that we need to understand here. So we start off at the top and we roll down like this. And every time you roll, right, it's changing shape, it's changing shape and it ends up opposite to how it started so this half right here right represents this half right here okay and then it ends up opposite to how it started so now let's see what restriction we can get from that okay so let me highlight also the arc that it followed through. So it traveled from the top all the way to the bottom. Okay, and in that time, you went from this position to all these positions, right? And then all the way turned around. And so this shell here was exposed to this entire arc length. And the restriction that we can get from that is, well, this big distance here, right, is R. The entire length of this green right here is R. And the angle is theta. So this entire arc length here, this big arc length is R theta all of this okay so that's what we're interested in so r theta it has to be equal to what we spin through in half the sphere okay what is this arc length here of half a sphere and that arc length is this angle here plus theta that represent half of the sphere so we're gonna do little r right because this length here so we, we see little r is half of the sphere and so we can we can put a line there if we want that represents r so little r phi plus theta and so these two have to be equal and this is your constraint And so what makes it so confusing sometimes is that in textbooks or whatever, <clears throat> the notation is not like this. Instead, they distribute this R to have R phi plus R theta. The left side is gonna be big R theta. They move the little R theta to the left side. You have R theta minus little R theta 
equals R5, and then they take out a theta. So you have R minus little r theta equals R5. This is the expression you usually see, and saying that big R minus little r theta, which looks to be this arc length here, equal to some r phi in here, it just, it doesn't make sense to me. But this is how it originates, right, from discovering these angles and these turns doing a half, you know, doing a flip 180, and then it's just rearranged like this, because we're gonna need the phi in our Lagrangian. So we want to arrange it where, you know, phi could be alone. So now that we have that, right, let's, let's rearrange it so phi could be alone. So phi is going to equal, we're going to divide by r. So big R, little r, theta, all divided by little r. So that right there is our constraint. And if we take the derivative of our constraint, we're going to get big R minus little r over little r and then theta dot. So these are the only two things that are a function of time. All right, so we're going to keep that for later for our Lagrangian. Okay, so now let's go back to the position and velocity. So our kinetic energy is going to be T equals one half mv squared, which can also be written as one half m x dot squared plus y dot squared. Okay, and we have our x dot and y dot terms. So when we plug those in, we're going to get one half m. Here we got r minus little r cosine theta theta dot all of that is squared plus the y dot which is this r minus little r sine theta theta dot squared okay so we're gonna see here that we're gonna get a cosine squared and a sine squared so t is equal to one half m we got big R minus little r squared, cosine squared, theta, theta dot squared from here. And on the other side, we're gonna have big R minus little r squared, sine squared, theta, and theta dot squared. So let's combine this cosine and sine to equal one. And what we're going to be left with is just this term by itself. So if I pull out uh, big R minus little r squared, big R minus little r squared, theta dot squared out from both terms, I'm going to be left with cosine plus sine, which is just one. So T is equal to one half M big R minus little r squared theta dot squared. Okay, so this kinetic energy here is not the entire thing. Okay, so this is just the translational motion. That's what it's called. We also need the rotational motion of the kinetic energy. Okay, so this is not the entire thing when you have a rotating system that is also moving in translation in the XY. And so this right here represents the translation, translational motion. All right, and now let's finish it and complete the other side. So we're gonna put this here we have 
I'm gonna write the formula uh, in full now. So we got the translational part, okay, plus one half I omega squared. Um, or we could write theta dot squared. So theta dot is also equal to omega. So just keep that in mind. When you see omega, you can also express it as theta dot, uh, which we're gonna do now, but I just wanted to show the difference. And let's remember that moment of inertia for a sphere is two fifths m r squared. Okay, so let's see, theta dot, right, we can use the constraint equation and represent theta dot in terms of phi dot or uh, vice versa. And so here, since we have uh, theta dot, let's just leave that alone for now. And let's see. Okay. Kinetic energy is equal to one half M. Down here we have big R minus little r squared, theta dot squared, which represents our translational most motion, plus we have one half the I for a sphere is two fifths m r squared, right? And the angular or the rotational motion is omega squared. And so usually it'll be theta dot squared, I mean theta dot equal to omega, but this angle that we're talking about moving through a rotational motion is phi. And so this is the angle that we're talking about. So we're not talking about this theta, we're talking about this phi, because this phi is the one moving through an angle, right, with omega, some type of, some type of rotational velocity. Okay, so we're gonna change this theta dot into phi dot equal to omega. Okay, so with that, then we can express this as phi dot squared. And let's clean it up a little bit. So finally, we're gonna have kinetic energy equal to one half m, big R minus little r squared, theta dot squared. These twos cancel, and you get plus one over five m r squared, phi dot squared. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it like that. All right, that's the kinetic energy. And now let's look for the potential energy. So the potential energy is gonna be expressed as mg, the height, and u is equal to mg, and the height is the y-axis in this problem. So it's gonna be y. And we have a value for y. Okay, so we're gonna have u is equal to big R minus little r cosine of theta. And I'm missing, okay. So <clears throat> this, this, um, this y right here, or this uh, potential represents the sphere when it's this distance away from the system, okay? So we've identified it to be here, right? That's the condition for our potential to be here. If this sphere is all the way at the bottom where you have a big R, then it wouldn't be r minus little r cosine, okay? So it is this because of where it's at. So that's the condition for this potential here. 
all right? So now we have kinetic energy, potential energy. Uh, let's just go ahead and write down our Lagrangian. And we're just gonna combine them. So the Lagrangian is T minus U. We have T, which is one half M R minus little r squared theta dot squared plus one fifth m r squared phi dot squared minus right minus u and use this right here r minus big r minus little r cosine theta okay so let's check that and where is this other parentheses here? Uh, <clears throat> I guess I didn't need it. So, I mean, I, it's, uh, it goes right there. Okay, so this is the Lagrangian of the system. Okay, and in this video I don't have space, but in another video, I'll do the Euler-Lagrange equations of motion, and we'll find that using the equations of motion, we can find that we get theta double dot plus five over seven, gravity over big R minus little r, theta, equal to zero. And so we are gonna have to do a small angle approximation. So it's just gonna be moving in a small angle. But using that, we can derive this equation of motion. And we can see that the angular frequency is omega equal to the square root of five G over seven big R minus little r. Okay, so in another video, um, I'll derive that, but this is for the kinetic and potential energy, how to go about getting the position and velocity um, vectors, you know, the distance to the center of the sphere. And I think the most important is the constraint equation. So this was the hardest part for me. So understanding this here allows you to manipulate this Lagrangian and change this phi if you need to in terms of theta. And so you can do the Lagrangian in terms of theta or you can change it back from theta dot in terms of phi so that way you can do the opposite and see how uh, different things are moving in the system, okay?